Keep going, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's stand on our feet if we would. We're live. There's people watching everywhere. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hello, Big Ryan. Praise the Lord. Hello, Brother Cliff. It's good to see you, man. Hey, I sure thank you for all for being here tonight. I want you just right now, how many of you are believers? Raise your hand. I mean, you're a believer. You, you, you believe in Jesus. Jesus is in you. You have the Holy Spirit in you. You have, you have breakthrough, the greater one living on the inside of you. Am I right? I'm going to ask you to enter in on purpose, just by faith. Throw all feelings to the side. Throw caution to the wind. And I want us to enter in by faith and let's press into his presence. God has something very special for us tonight. We're going to talk about the God of the breakthrough. And I know that I know that I know this is the next step in our series on the anointing. And I believe God wants to demonstrate. I believe there's, there's great, amazing doors that are opening unto many. And I'm asking you tonight to throw feelings to the side and by faith believe into the presence of God right now with me, would you? Come on, let's worship him. Let's just praise him. Don't ask him for a thing. In his presence is everything you could ask for or need. Let's just praise and press into his presence. The fullness of God. Glory, glory. You sense that right there already? You sense that? You'll feel, you'll sense the anointing sit upon you. Most of the time it comes from above, so you'll feel it right on your neck, your traps area. Then as we keep pressing, it'll run all the way down. Press in, press in to the presence of God. God, we worship you right now. We worship you, the one true living God. God and God is love. We press into your presence, oh God. We come with joyful hearts. We come, Lord. We come bare before you. Jesus has enabled us to. Grace empowers us to. Grace welcomes us to. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Come on, praise him. Don't just listen to me. I can't do anything. Let's look to him. Let's praise him. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Oh, Lord, we bless you. We praise you. God, we thank you for the anointing of God. We're so hungry for your presence. We can literally say we are a people who are hungry for the presence of God. Filled with it, but longing for it. Thank you. In your presence is fullness of joy, and joy is our strength. In your presence, God, Glory and honor are in your presence. Heavy with everything good, heavy goodness, weighty goodness is in the presence of the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. to God. Say that with me. Glory to God. Just begin saying that. 
Glory to God. Come on. All day they would say one thing like, for the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Come on, there it is. Let's say that. Ready? For the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. The people would say that all day. Let's say it again. Ready? For the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Come on, let's say it again. For the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. Again, for the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. Say it again. For the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. See, we're not declaring it now. We're saying it in his presence to him. Ready? For the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Mm. Now let's personalize it. For the Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Tell him, ready? For Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Tell him again, Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Let's tell him again, Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Mm -mm -mm. Tell him again, for the Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Come on, let's yield to the anointing. Let's yield to the Spirit. Hallelujah. Blessed be His holy name. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Holy Spirit. You are welcome in this place. You are the difference. You are the life of what we do. You are the life of the scriptures. You are our breath. You breathed in us and we received the Holy Spirit. You came upon us and you filled us with the Spirit. You sealed us unto the day of redemption by the Holy Spirit. And we bless you and we praise you and we honor you glory and honor and strength and splendor and majesty be unto the lamb upon the throne who was slain and who lives forever he is alpha and omega he is aleph and he is tav he is the first and he is the last He's the beginning, and he is the end. He is the beginning of truth, and he is the end of truth. He is the beginning of way, and he is the ending of way. He is the beginning of life, and he is the end of life. He is our resurrection, and he is our life. And because he lives, we are alive forevermore. And we will never be classified as the dead. We will never be judged as the dead. We will never be classified as the goat or judged with the goat. Hallelujah. We're in the lamb and his judgment is our judgment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he's judged us righteous. <laughs> He's judged us justified. He's judged us accepted in the beloved. He's judged us justified. Hallelujah. He's judged us holy in his presence. He's judged us sanctified in his presence. By the Spirit, can you say amen? Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, 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 bless his name. Bless his holy name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Mm, man, nothing like Jesus. Nothing like the Spirit of the Lord. 
liberty, liberty. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, we have a mandate from the Holy Spirit of God tonight that the God of the breakthrough is breaking through for you. I'm talking about things you've been believing God standing on and not letting go of. I'm telling you, breakthrough is for you and it is beginning for you in the name of Jesus. He's the God of breakthrough. Baal Parathim, the Lord of breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm speaking by the spirit unction tonight that anything that threatens you spiritually, solically, or physically, anything that is contrary to the covenant's best, it is a threat. And we say, oh Lord, behold the threat and stretch forth thine hand to heal, oh God. We shout breakthrough to every threat in the name of Jesus tonight. Every spiritual threat, we look to it in the name of Jesus and we declare the Lord of breakthrough be upon you in the name of Jesus. Every solical threat, every solical threat, every solical bondage, every solical deficiency, every solical wound, we look to it in the name of Jesus and we say breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Every physical threat, every cancer, every lupus, every diabetes, every sickness and every disease, every flu, every cold, every blood deficiency, every sickness, every disease, every migraine headache in the name of Jesus, every kidney stone, every gallbladder issue, every colon issue, every ulcerative colitis, every Crohn's, all of it, all sickness, all disease, we say the Lord of breakthrough to you in the name of Jesus. We're breaking through. We're breaking through. We're passing through. And we're coming out in the name of Jesus. The God of our breakthrough. It's time. It's time. We've not grown weary in well-doing and we're reaping a harvest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Baal, Paratzim, the Lord of breakthrough. Hallelujah. He's the Lord of hosts, and he's the Lord of our harvest. And he's the Lord of our breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've run, we've walked, we've climbed, we've marched. And bless God, we've entered in by his grace. Hallelujah. We've entered in, we've broken through. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We worship you and we praise you, O oh God, for you go before us. <laughs> you go before us. You never forsake us. You're in us. You're before us. You're behind us. You're beside us and you're upon us. For you are the omnipotent God. You're everywhere. Thank you. You go before us. You make the way straight for us. It's not by our might. It's not by our ability. Our faith is to be anchored in the power of God, not the fancy of no man. It is in not no program. It is in the power of God. Hallelujah. My faith is in his ability. My faith is in his ability to print, to, 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 uh, Present me acceptable. (laughs) 
He's able to present me righteous. Mm. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but I completely lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. <clears throat> what shall we say to these things? If God, if Baal Peretzim, if the Lord of Breakthrough be for us, if Jehovah Yireh, if God my provider be for us, if Jehovah Nisi, if God our banner be for us, if Jehovah Rapha, if the Lord my healer, <laughs> before us who or what could be against us oh hallelujah mm -mm -mm. thank you Jesus hallelujah glory how many of you love Jesus don't you love his presence ah uh, this is just one of the many reasons we gather together for corporate praise, corporate anointing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Do you receive your breakthrough? You have to receive it. I receive breakthrough. By the name of the Lord of breakthrough, <laughs> I receive healing. By the name of the Lord of my healing, I receive all provision by the Lord who daily loads us, daily provision. Hallelujah. I tell you by the Holy Ghost, man, there is great and amazing doors about to open up unto you. I'm not talking about just us as the, the ministry. The ministry is built off of you. You understand that? When I say the church, I'm not talking about this building. I'm talking about you individual lives, all of us. We all gathered in all the ones that named this home but couldn't be here tonight. We make up Heartland Church, Brownwood, Texas. But I'm telling you, there is amazing doors, an amazing door of opportunity that is spiritually opened unto you now. Amen. 
I'm talking, listen to me. I'm talking about a dream door. I'm talking about something you've stood for, a desire of the heart door. And spiritually, we've come to a moed on God's calendar and that door has opened now. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. The closer you get to that, the, the, the breakthrough, listen to me. That's why several of you, well, I would just say several of us, Winter Bible Seminar was a, a, a dead gum grand slam in the spirit realm. People healed left and right, people still giving testimonies. Complete kidney failure, about to have to start dialysis. Absolutely got a report, said their, your kidneys are functioning like brand new. No, and that's just one of many, many healings. You've heard the testimony, all of them. But then since then, many people have talked about agitation and anger and, and all kinds of opportunities to overcome and be offended. That's because we was coming up to the spiritual door of opportunity. And the enemy tries to agitate and sift you to get you to take offense, take anger, take this, take that, to get you focused on everything except breakthrough. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you by the Spirit of God, we made it to the door and the Lord of breakthrough has broken through for us. Can you say I receive it in the name of Jesus? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Isn't he wonderful? Let's just, if you can, just be seated if you can. Let's look at this handout right quick. Let's grow it a little bit more. We'll just stay with the flow. That'd be all right. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. My, my, my. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ah, he's good and his mercy endures forever. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you, Lord. Look at your hand out, please. Sunday morning, there was a, a tongues and an interpretation, and it was just so anointed. The Spirit of God bore witness with it several times. Let's read it together. This was Sunday morning. You have to hold words like this. Far too many times a word, I mean a word of the Lord will come forth and people say amen and shout about it and then they just forget about it. And that's not how words of the Lord come to pass. Read it with me out loud, please. This was the interpretation. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12 that to one may be, be given a tongue to that same one or to another can be the interpretation of what was said in the spirit in a tongue that you were that you were never taught you didn't you didn't learn it it's it's a unction of the spirit and this was the interpretation come from through our youth pastor uh, Heath Henry let's read it out loud ready I hear your words I receive your words I will distribute to the land. I will distribute to the people. For there is coming a day when we will be one, and that day is near. Glory to God. Can you say amen, somebody? Let's read it one more time. I hear your words. I receive your words. I will distribute to the land. I will distribute to the people. For there is coming a day when we will be one, and that day is near. 
Read Micah 2.13. This is, our, this is our, our, our base scripture for tonight. Ready? The breaker, the Messiah, who opens the way, shall go up before them, liberating them. They will break out, pass through the gate, and go out. So their king goes before them, the Lord at their head. <laughs> read the easy to read version. Ready? The one who breaks through walls. What's he do? Read it again. He breaks through walls. What's he do? He breaks through walls. Will push through and walk to the front of his people. Read the complete Jewish Bible. I, God, will burst all confinements and lead them out into the open. They'll follow their king. I will be out in front leading them. <laughs> Are you here tonight, somebody? Let's read the Amplified again. Ready? The breaker, the Messiah, who opens the way shall go up before them, liberating them. They will break out, pass through the gate, and go out. So their king goes before them, the Lord at their head. Easy to read version. Ready? The one who breaks through walls. Ah, read it again. He breaks through walls will push through and walk to the front of his people. He goes before us, y'all. Complete Jewish Bible, ready? I, God, will burst all confinements and lead them out into the open. They'll follow their king. I will be out in front leading them. Are you here? He goes out in front of us, and we follow him. He doesn't, he, we don't lead him. He leads us. We follow him, right? 1 Corinthians 2, 5 says, Your faith should not rest on men's human wisdom, but your faith should rest on God's dynamite. Dunamis word is the word. Dynamite, power, miraculous wonder, working power. That's our faith is in that. We could also say our faith is in his word because I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God. We could also say it's in the spirit because 1 Corinthians 124 says that the anointing is the wisdom and the power of God. Huh? Our faith is in the power of God. What do you mean? It's in the anointing. What do you mean? It's in the spirit of God. What do you mean? It's in the wisdom of God. What do you mean? It's in God. <laughs> right? The Message Bible. Read that translation of it where it says MSG right there. Ready? Your life of faith is a response to God's power. I like that, don't you? What is faith? It's something the spirit of it's 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 the spirit of God in you to yeah. make it real easy. Yeah. It comes from God, yes. It gives substance to things, yes. But it's simply yes. the word and the spirit of God living in you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Read it again. Your life of faith is a response. It's what? It's a response. Faith is a response to God. And the Spirit of God came upon me in that laundry room and filled every atom of that room. He put faith in me at that moment. I had faith. How? He came upon me. He breathed into me. I wasn't seeking him. I wasn't looking for him. All of a sudden, I was full of him. And I responded. That was faith. Faith is a divine response. Listen, to love. Right? Because God is love. Woman, where are those who condemn you? I have none. Listen, step one, I don't condemn you. Step two, go and sin no more. 
the no condemnation empowered her to sin no more. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Your life of faith is a response to God's power, not to some fancy mental or emotional footwork by me or anybody else. There's far too many churches that are built off of emotional fancy footwork, and that does not change lives or build lives. It may draw a crowd, but I ain't interested in drawing a crowd, and I'll tell you that. Hallelujah. I'm looking for the fruit of the Spirit and the fruit of our born-again spirit. Hallelujah. I want Jesus and his presence and the word of God in its fullness, unadulterated, not tainted with man's opinion or men's doctrines, and that's what we have, and that's what we're going to keep. And we're going to continue to stay with the word and stay with the spirit and enter into wonderful places like we already have and like we did tonight and like we're continuing to do. Hallelujah. I tell you this boldly, if anybody leaves the church, it will not slow me down, and you need to hear me say that to even you. I promise you the pedal will be put to the, me to the metal and full coals will be poured to the fire, whoever leaves, and we will have a glorious service, the very next service that you're not a part of it. Are you here, somebody? I love everybody, but my destiny does not hinge on you being here or not. I say that in love, but you need to know where I stand. I know the state of this flock, and you need to know the state of one of the pastors of this flock. That's where I stand. I love everybody, but I will not break and quit if you decide that you're done with it. That, listen to me. People that love good, strong, backbone leadership will say amen to that. Hallelujah. I'm not a pimp. You can't hooker me out. You can't pay me to do it. You can't flatter me. You can't manipulate me. We're staying with the Word, and we're staying with the Spirit because that is how we get through breakthrough, spirit, soul, and body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, if that sounds a little bit strong, you need to adapt that own mentality for people in your own life. You, listen, you need to run from flattery. Flattery is always inspired by devils. False comments. False edification. False pats on the back. It's a setup. It's leverage that's going to be used against you. You hear somebody? It's never for your good. It's for the one that's doing its good. And it is always demonically inspired. And the Bible has a lot in the book of Proverbs that says, run, I mean fast as you can, from flattery. Flattery is, is, is Satan's honor. It's Satan's honor honor it's false honor but it feeds and feels good to the flesh but we're here, here we're, we're somewhere now in the spirit on this receive that that's not that's, that's just from the Holy Ghost to help somebody help all of us run from flattery don't accept flattery especially men to women single women especially single men coming from a woman ain't nothing has the influence in a man's life like a woman women be careful with the, the, the power that you have hallelujah don't flatter a man don't flatter a man wives be careful how you respond wives I said wives especially you be careful how, how you talk to other men if you don't want to be hit on, quit sending out the signal. Huh? You don't want people thinking you're a hooker, quit dressing like one. Huh? Come on, somebody. If you ain't loose, don't talk loose. Hallelujah. You train people how to treat you. 
You train people how they can look at you and talk to you. You've trained them. If they talk to you like a hoe, you need to consider, have I acted like one? Do I dress like one? Do I come across like one? Come on. Hoes and nowadays word, we could use a lot of Bible words, it's the same thing. An adulteress. You like that if that palate's any easier. It's the same thing. But we have to be careful. It's important as, as men, especially married men, that we don't honor other women more than our own wife. We talk, we talk these things. Hallelujah. Breakthrough. Breakthrough from flattery can be huge. Flattery will get you spirit, soul, and body because you're one. Spirit, soul, and body, you're one being. And you can find yourself in situations that you'll regret the rest of your days. You can be healed from it and cleansed from it, but you still take the memory of it to your grave. I know from whence I speak because of, listen, flattery. Because you don't want to hurt their feelings. Had you rather hurt your, your spouse's feelings? Or the strange woman's voice's feelings? Or the strange man's voice's feelings? Which one do you choose to guard more? Your spouse? Or the one who's being used? And look beyond that person. Look at the devil that's driving it. Hmm? Hallelujah. Our life of faith is a divine response to God's power. A divine response to God's love. How many of you are thankful for his, just his, I'm talking about, I'm, listen, listen. I'm talking about, I'm talking about his gushy, gushy break you. You can't talk in it. You can't pray in it. All you can do is sob in it. I'm talking about mercy. I'm talking about completely undeserved. You be praying about one thing, and when Jesus comes up on it, you done praying about it. When he shows up, it's met. <laughs> Am I right? I mean, you through praying. You just like, Father, I thank you. It's true, isn't it? I'm talking about the presence of love. The presence of capital L, love. God is love. God is agape love. He is not touchy. He's not fretful. You can talk to him any old way you want when he knows your heart and he'll still come up on you and just crawl in that bed with you and say, come here. Right after you gave him a cussing, he'll, come here. I know your heart. I know you don't mean, you don't even know me. You, you, you know my name. That's about all you know. Come here. This is who I am. You, right? Yes. I've thrown Bibles. I've ripped Bibles. I've kicked Bibles. I've tore Bibles apart. I've cussed God. I've thrown them up in the air. I ain't ever burned one. I, that, I mean, that's like last straw. <laughs> and when you get ready to go back to his presence, there he is. And listen to me. He don't look at you any different. And I promise you, don't, you, from my experience, it's never any different than this. He never even brings up. Now, how could you do that? Ever. He's, he's, always, he's always in the now. He never goes back and says, how could you do that? You remember when you did that? He don't do it. There's not a person on earth, ain't a minister on this earth could, could convince me he does it. He, he don't. I don't see it in the Word, and I've never experienced it in my own walk with him. He's always now. Now faith is. Now faith responds to his power. Now faith is a divine response to God's power. Now God is love. There is therefore now no condemnation. When? Now. Yeah, but what about now? Now. But what if when I, now there is no condemnation? Are you here, somebody? Will, think about this scripture. Will the unfaithfulness of one negate 
his faithfulness? Absolutely not, <laughs> Romans tells us. Ah, I believe there's breakthrough happening just right now in his presence, y'all. He said, will the unfaithfulness of Israel negate God's covenant? Comma, absolutely not. The gift and the calling is without repentance. Remember, repent means change the thinking. God will never change his thinking about the divine call on your life, Jacob. Willie, dude. Huh? Hallelujah is right, my friend. The God of the breakthrough, he opens doors. Look at here right quick. Acts 5, 18. And they laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison, but at night an angel, an angel, just any one of them, an angel of the Lord, opened the prison doors and brought them out. <laughs> what did he do? He opened it and he brought them out. God opens the doors and he leads them out. Remember where we started? The breaker who opens the way, he goes before them, liberating them. They will break out, pass through. The one who breaks through the walls will push through and walk to the front of his people. Man, God's a stud, y'all. <laughs> I don't know another way to say it. He's a man-man. I mean a man's man. He's a hunk, a hunk of burning love. Am I, isn't he? <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> He's wonderful. I, God, will burst all confinements and lead them out. Look at Acts 14, 27. Now when they had come and gathered the church together, they reported all that God had done with them. That right there is, is a scriptural church service. When we come together, didn't sing a song. We just gathered and started talking about all that God had done with us throughout the week. Well, I tell you, I went here and God healed this one. I had a divine opportunity in the grocery store. I was buying lettuce and tomatoes, and all of a sudden I just had an unction to talk to this guy person standing next to me. I had an encouraging word for them. They just talked about all that God was doing with them. They prayed together, took communion, separated again, went back to doing the work of the Lord. They understood you don't go to church, you are the church. And that he, God, had opened the door. Do you see that? God had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. God had opened the door. Now, this is important. Read the next highlighted line where it says door with me. Ready? Door. The Greek word is thura. Say that. Thura. Greek 101. What is door scripturally? Ready? A portal, a passage, an entrance, an opportunity. That's what door is in God's thinking. It's a divine passage. It's a divine entrance into. It's a divine opportunity. That's what has opened unto you this day is a divine passage for some. For some, you're going to find a divine entrance into something you've been believing for. Others are going to find a divine, amazing opportunity come to you. 1 Corinthians 16, read that with me. But I will tarry in Ephesus until Pentecost. Why? For a great and effective door has opened to me and there are many adversaries. It's important that you remember with adversaries, you might want to write there Ephesians 6, 12. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Yes. Many times it'll be, you know, people that are resisting you, people that are standing against you, but it is not the people, it's principalities and powers that are driving them. Your battle is not with flesh and blood. Let God deal with the flesh and blood. Right? 
So when we read door, let's read what the, 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 the line above it. For a great and effective passage, a great and effective entrance, a great and effective opportunity has opened. Notice this, it has opened. If it has opened to him, it wasn't always opened. It's something that God opens, and I'll tell you, these doors open through much prayer. It's time spent. I don't mean five minutes. I don't mean five hours. I don't even mean five days. It can be years of praying out the plan of God by faith. A lot of it's, most of it's praying in and by the Spirit. And you're just, Father, I'm praying about the plan of God concerning. We spent years, we still do it. We're praying about the plan of God for our lives. We're praying out the plan of God. The blueprint for Heartland. Right? And, and, and you pray the best you know how according to your own language. Then you lean to Romans 8, 26. Now, Father, likewise the Spirit helps me in my infirmity, for I don't know exactly how I ought to pray, but the Spirit himself is now going to make intercession through me concerning the will of God. And then you begin praying in the Spirit around the plan, the blueprint. You're, you're focused on that. You're pointing your tongue. The target is the plan. Are you here, somebody? And you're praying in the Spirit. Listen, you're, you're, you're praying from unction from here, but your tongue and your mind is set on the target, and somehow you're staying connected down in here to hear anything that the Spirit might tell you. And then if you hear something down in here in your own known language, you begin to voice that in your own tongue. See, now you're getting understanding and, and pieces of the puzzle here. Make sense? It's vital that you do that. Most of the things of God for your life, you're going to have to pray those things out. Not the pastor, not other believers. You. Okay? But so he says, uh, look at the complete Jewish Bible down at the, the bottom, the translation of the same scripture. Let's read it together. Because a great and important door has opened. How many of you have been believing? Now, now, really, be sensitive. You've been believing God. You need this important door, this important passage, this important entrance, this very important opportunity. You've needed it to open. Raise your hand. Okay. Hallelujah. Go to the next, look at the easy to read version, please. Read that with me. This is just translations of that same scripture. Are you getting anything? Easy to read version. Ready? Read. I will stay here because a good opportunity for a great and growing work has been given to me now. That's something that God had opened up then. That he had been believing God to open. Are you seeing that? Notice he says, I will stay here because I want to encourage you. There are certain things that you never enter into without remaining. You don't enter into God's destined doors by bailing. Well, we're here. We've not bailed. I know, but we're all capable. Okay? And there's people watching online, and there's people whenever, when, will get this CD. And God will bring it into their life at the appointed time. And they may be, may be teeter-tottering on bailing out taking offense, just done quitting. The Spirit of God will never come upon you and anoint you to quit. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me for He's anointed me to quit. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, He's anointed me to bail out. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, He's anointed me to take offense. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me for He has anointed me to not forgive them. You see how weirded out that sounds? That's how weirded out it is when people try to live there. Are you with me now? 
He said, I will remain here because a great effective door has opened unto me. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you tonight that the, where you have chosen to remain because God said remain, I'm telling you a great door has opened in the spirit realm for you. Good news translation. Let's read it, please. There is a real opportunity here for great and worthwhile work. Isn't that wonderful? A great, a real opportunity. Message Bible, ready? A huge door of opportunity for good work has opened up here. <laughs> New Living Translation, ready? There is a wide open door for great work here. Wide open. Isn't that good? Wide open. Wide open door. I'm not talking about creeping through it. I'm talking about wide open. Open sesame. Every time we'd go to Walmart, thank God I hadn't go to, had to go there in years. I think there's a box right out front. People put their, their whole cerebral, all of it, in there before they go in. I'm not sure. <laughs> But every time me and Jody get to the door, I'm just a big clown when it's just me and her. You don't really know that side, but when it's me and her, I'd walk up to the door and I'd say, open. And those electronic doors would go, and I'd just kind of like walk in like a boss. You know? I'm practicing having what I say, open. It is good. It always, made, it always resonated spiritually in me. When we say, breakthrough in the name of Jesus. See, when it's important that we say what the Spirit of God gives you. Your daily confession, listen to me, your daily confession is primarily to keep you tuned in and keep you practicing the practice of, if I say it, I'm going to have it, good or bad. But listen, every time, boy, this is just really upset some people, but You're always building with your words, especially when there's passion of any kind with them. Huh? When you're full of anger, we could say filled with. So it's a, think of being filled with the Spirit. You can be, the Bible says they were filled with anger. See, that's, that, 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 that's, that's more than just human anger. And when that is present and you... You say something out of that, there's empowerment on it. Whether it's, listen, same Greek word, whether it's dunamis of God, spirit, or dunamis of Satan. Now you, you alter things with those words. Huh? The daily confession of, I thank you, Father, that I'm healed. I thank you that I am healed. Most of that is keeping me sensitive for rhema. I, I quote Logos all the time. But what is Logos? This is Logos, written word, full counsel of God's word. Rhema is spoken word. It's when a word comes up in you, comes alive to you, or in a service, breakthrough. The Lord will break through, and that hits your spirit. That's rhema now. It's, it's the God-breathed word present to you. That's the kind of word you hold on and you begin speaking now because that word has the, the living unction on it. Are you here now? That's the kind of words that move mountains. See? And the reason you, 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 you daily practice your words is so that when rhema comes to you you've already built confidence in your own words listen that's why lying is so detrimental to the power of using your words because listen you build a confidence you build a mentality deep in yourself that you don't even believe what you say because you know you lie 
So then when you try to move a mountain with words, you don't even believe your own words, much less that what I say will come to pass because you don't even speak the truth half the time. Are you here, anybody? Huh? Yeah. It's like the Bible talks to employers. He said, stop threatening. Just do what you said you're going to do. Quit threatening. Why? Because you train everybody that you're full of bull monarchy. That you don't mean what you say. You're just a big, you're just, you're just a hot air balloon is all you are. You do that again, I'm going to spank you. You do that again, I'm going to spank you. You do that again, I'm going to spank you. You're a liar and you're training that kid. You're a big fat liar. Your nose is longer than a telephone wire liar. That's what you're training them. Come on, somebody. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. I'm going to tell you what. Elmo Thomas Stutter Jr., he'd look at me like this. He'd say, I knew right then, you do it one more time, Jason Caleb Stutter, you ain't going to be able to pick them toys up. <laughs> My daddy wear me out. Yeah. Come on. He did not train me that I'm a liar, and I really don't mean it. He didn't, and we never did this thing. One, two, you are training that kid to push the envelope as far as they can. Come on. And then most of the time when they get to three, three. Now, I told you, listen, you're training them. You don't mean business. Now, I understand. Listen, if you've had CPS in your life once, they can be there for a long time. I understand the fears that can come in. I understand that. But you can't, you, you need to at least ask God for wisdom in how to, to incorporate discipline. Because otherwise, hell gets into that child's soul, the Bible tells us. Come on. The Bible says, and when they cry, don't feel sorry for them. They'll make it. They'll be all right. It's what Proverbs tells us. Come on. We just get, God, God's just taking us everywhere tonight. Breakthrough. Wisdom. Breakthrough. But you, you listen. Well, I don't believe in whipping my kids. I know. We can all tell. You don't even have to tell us that. We know you don't. Are you with me? <laughs> That's not pointed at anybody. That's why I looked at the ground. I wouldn't dare, you know. We can tell you don't believe in. No, I wouldn't do that. But you do have to, you have to, you know, you do. You have to stay in wisdom, but be wise as the serpent, harmless as the dove in all the matters. But don't train people. He said, employers, stop threatening. Yeah, again, I'm going to fire you. No, you're not. You just threat. Come on. I'm not afraid of the guy that says, I'll tell you what I'll do to you. I mean, I'll jack slap you. I'll knock you. I'll knock you. Man, hey, go on. It's that dude just looks at you real. You can't even tell he's got a heartbeat. Am I right? <laughs> you kind of walk up on him like, how you doing? <laughs> Come on, am I right? Yes, sir. You don't worry about that dog that's... <laughs> <laughs> then you open his cage, <laughs> he gets in the corner. You worry about that dog just lays there and looks at you. <laughs> that's the one you respect. <laughs> Isn't it right? You respect it. You what? Risk R E S P E C T. <laughs> Find out what it means to me. <laughs> you respect it. He says, employers, stop threatening. Just do it. Hallelujah. I watched Pastor Ken lay the sword down one time and it impacted me. I'm talking about the sword of the Spirit. That's it. Done with his words. Hallelujah. Bring respect. He told me in my young coming up years, he said, son, this, uh, listen, don't, don't just laugh with me. Re receive the wisdom in this. If you're always making a point, it's going to be hard for you to make a point. Man, isn't that good? 
if you're always trying to make a point to somebody, it's going to be hard for you to make a point. It's like the person that everything's always an eight or a nine. Everything is 911 issue. Well, what are you going to do to make us believe you when it really is a 911 issue? Because you've trained us that you're full of bull. Everything's 911 to you. Are you with me? You have to be careful with those things. Don't measure it out if you really don't mean it like that. You set the standard measure. Don't measure it out like that if it's not that. Yeah. I had to learn to not throw certain words in on, on, on every sentence just because I was very passionate. Huh? Everything's not the best. And I grew, grew through that. And a lot of it was because I wanted to sell you on it. I wanted you to agree with me. So if this is the, the best eyeglasses, I'm the best eyeglasses. You know what I'm saying. You do anything you take, am I right? I'm talking about the freaking best, the, mm, the best, best glasses they make. I'm wanting you to believe me. And I'd ask Pastor, whatever, you, you like that phone? I do. That's all they say, I do. Are you here? You like that Bible? Oh. <laughs> best Bible on the market. You like that Bible? I do. See? It's different when, you know, when we come into the passion thing, I, and I worded it carefully. It's one of the most accurate translations I've ever come across. I said it like that, that I've ever come across. And I said, I would advise you if you're a studier, and you love to read the word, especially, I said, I would, I would advise you to get one. I think you'd be blessed by it. I think you'd enjoy it. But I did not say, forsake every Bible. Forsake your grandma's Bible. Get you the passion. No. You don't have to sell it. Does that make sense to anybody? How many times I would find myself trying to sell something to Joe instead of just leading it and saying, I think we need to do this. Now, I need her agreement, but it can't come through, listen, let's just call it what it is, manipulation. Because when you're trying to sell it, you're really trying to bend her. Listen, don't no strong arm. Strong arming never gets a good response. How many of you, I mean, just raise your hand. You like being strong armed. Raise your hand. No, put your hand, put your hand up. <laughs> made to do it, made to do it. You don't like that. Why? The dominion of God in you says no to that. The dominion of God, the thing that's in you, male or female, called have dominion, does not like and will not tolerate being strong-armed because we've been given a dominion over everything except other humans. So when a human tries to strong-arm another human, it's not a good thing. We getting anything out of this? Okay. So don't sell it. You don't have to sell it. I will tell you where it requires patience is letting God put that in her heart. Oh, Lord, it's going to be out of date. No. If it's God, listen to me. Listen. If it's God, God will bring it to pass. She loves God. She hears God just as well as I can. Sometimes better, especially if he speaks to her. Right? There's times the Bible said, Abraham, listen to Sarah. There's other times he said, Sarah, listen to Abraham. Right? We both hear God. God, we're going to miss this awesome opportunity. Why? Because you can't manipulate her? Maybe. <laughs> no. No, no. <laughs> no. Lord, I just... I've, I've shared with her, and now I just drop that now. That's tough to do. It is tough. Especially if you are kind of a passionately driven person. 
Do you have a lot of choleric, choleric melancholy to you? Even other personalities. Am I right? Anybody? Is, huh? Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm just a natural born leader. Well, hang on. Hang, hang on. Maybe you're just naturally driven. Come on. Look at Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. Let's read it out loud if we would all together. Hadn't this been a wonderful time together? Man, the Spirit of God, I, I'm just looking forward to seeing the re reports that come out of this. Our time in the Spirit. Proverbs 3, let's read it together. Trust. Oh, stop, stop. That's a that's big word. Big word. It's a big word. It's a big, big word. Trust is a big word, especially if it's ever been violated. Betrayal. Jesus knows what that's like. And to be honest, we've all betrayed him before. We've chosen something over him. With his spirit living in us. And we drug the presence of God into the situation. And he still loved us and accepted us and didn't forsake us. Can we say thank you, Jesus? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Now, that always says this to me. Trust is a heart issue. Trust is not mental. Trust is inner man. Trust is, that's why trust broken hurts deep. Because it's a heart issue. When we say heart, we're not talking the blood pump or the cardia. We're talking about inner man, the spirit, the spirit of you, the spirit you, the real you. The you that gets a new name one day, that you. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct, direct your path. A lot of times people venture out on something and then they ask the Lord's blessing on it. <laughs> Come on, we hit a good spot right there. I really think I'm going to whatever. Y'all just, y'all just believe God going to be blessed. Huh? <laughs> pray for me, Sheila. Just be in prayer for me. This is good, y'all. Breakthrough, breakthrough. Yes, Come on. These things deal with what might be, what can hinder the open door that God's opened unto you tonight. Yeah. I want you to believe God with me. That's my wife. Well, sir, she's already married. God told me. No, he didn't. Uh -uh. I'm just, that has happened to me, but I'm just glad. I am thankful. I, whoop, 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 whoop. I'm thankful that they never pointed at Jody and said, that's my wife. Oh, the temptation that I would have to overcome, and hopefully I would overcome it. You laugh, but you know you would too. Men, you a real man in here, you would have to overcome that. Can I have at least an amen from any man in the house? Somebody come up and point at your wife and say, I want you to believe God with me. That's my wife. You like, uh, hey, what you talking about, Willis? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Some of you ladies, if a woman come up and said, I'm just asking you to believe God with me. I've got my eyes set on this hunk. And I know that the Spirit of God has told me that is my man. Hmm, who's that? That man right there, and it's your husband. Hmm. What? <laughs> she, she said, absent from the body, present with the Lord. <laughs> Come on, God. <laughs> Let me believe God and lay hands on you, would you? Yes. Clo close your eyes and lift your hands. 
Look, they're out in the spirit. <laughs> I don't know what the blood in the sideways jaw is about, but they're out. <laughs> trust in the Lord. Oh, it's a big word, trust in the Lord. I tell you what, to, to come to this point to where God opens the door requires trust. Listen, there's things that we've believed God for over 20 years, y'all. That we're walking in some of it, not all of it. Listen, you don't, you got to be so careful, especially with the things of God, y'all. God doesn't operate on that clock. He's God now in Brownwood, Texas, and he's the same God now at their time in Indonesia, right now. Huh? He, he does, his, his timing is not ours. We're, we're governed by the clock. He's not. So that's why to let God open the door. I remember going to pastor so many, I, honestly, I don't know how many times in those younger years. And I mean, I was just, I, I mean, I needed, I was about to, uh, to go over into the, into the, the overflow re reservoir. I mean, the radiator's about to boil over. And I would share with him what God was doing in me, and he'd say, just let him grow it, son. Let him grow it. I would leave thinking, you are so not sensitive to the Holy Ghost. I am full. It's full, deep, grown. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It can't grow anymore. Just let him grow it, son. Let him grow it. Getting God good, let him grow it. Lord, I don't know how to make it any more clear to him. Like he didn't know. You with me? And now I find myself encouraging people. Let God produce it. Don't force it. When you force a situation or a person, listen, if I was to put you, whoever, you, you, anybody, Brother Cliff, if I was to put Cliff into a position, let's, any, in the church, that the Spirit of God had not prepared Cliff, groomed Cliff through, listen to me, through many opportunities, Come on, it's all right that I'm using you as a... To quit, to get frustrated, to hate me, to not agree with me, but yet stay in agreement. You don't have to agree with me to stay in agreement spiritually. Come on, this is wisdom, man. Ye many opportunities to do that. Many opportunities to talk about me to his family, what he don't like about me, how he thinks it should have been done this way, how he didn't take up for me, he didn't, he didn't defend me, he didn't this, he didn't that. I mean, he is just... All those opportunities. I'm telling you, years of all them opportunities, and yet, stay faithful. Without all that grooming and spiritual and solical landscaping, I would set him up to fail, and it would hinder anybody under his authority. And I would set him up for the snare of the devil. Paul told it to a pastor named Timothy in the Word. And it would affect for the negative anybody under his authority. And that's why the Bible says, do not lay hands suddenly on nobody. Laying on of hands was more than be healed. It was a setting apart unto. And he said, you be careful not to do that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's, let's begin. We, uh, is that how much time we have left? Or is that what time it is? Oh, praise the Lord. We're doing great. Go down to Acts 16, please, down toward the bottom. We'll wrap this up. I believe we've been in the presence. We've heard from the Lord, and we've gotten the wisdom of God all together. I believe it's a successful night in the Spirit. Acts 16, 24. Let's read it, please. 
Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were loosed. Sometimes it's just being in the right place at the right time. Huh? Isn't it right? Just at the right place at the right time. And your door got open because his door got open. Huh? Here, their prayer and praise, that's what they were doing in the stocks. Man, this was a torture device to get answers out of you. It was, it was a form of examining. And at midnight, the darkest part of the night, huh? what was their default? Prayer and praise. Let me ask you this. When, when your feet are in the stocks solically, and it's the darkest point of the tr test, what's your default? Is it prayer and praise? By faith, everybody say, yes, that's my default. Yes, that's my default. Prayer and praise. And at midnight, they murmured and complained, and they said, if it wasn't for you, Paul, I wouldn't be here in these stocks. I followed you. <laughs> huh? You said God told you that we were supposed to cast that devil out of that fortune-telling girl. Is never the Spirit of God. Show me anywhere in the Bible where you are justified for blaming somebody. On that cross, Jesus didn't say, I'm up here for y'all. Did he? Wasn't for all y'all's sins, I wouldn't be up here. Ma'am? Yeah. Hey, do you really... When, the, when those people, let me get the Do you realize that had Jesus not have voiced faith from his heart in this phrase, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, we would all be doomed to hell. At midnight, feet in the stocks, boat over it, you can't imagine the pain that this shoots through the nerves. They prayed and sang praises, not about God, to God. May we always be conscious of that in praise and worship. We're not singing about Him, we're singing to Him. How many of you have been blessed by the worship? I mean, just in the many, many weeks gone by, just the honesty, the purity, the presence of God. I'm enjoying incorporating the youth and the main team together, making it one team. I'm open to anything that's God, man. We, I'm to, we're not doing church. We are the church. I just want the flow of the Spirit. That's all I want. Hallelujah. I mean, if Rocky right now said, I believe I have a word from God, brother, I want to hear it. I mean, don't you? That's all we want, the flow of the Spirit. People being liberated. What's the, what is the purpose of the church? Well, the church is the people. The purpose of gathering is to be strengthened and encouraged and equipped. The purpose of the anointing is to meet the needs of the people, spirit, soul, and body. That's why we gather. <laughs> Isn't that good? That's why we gather. And any program we do is to facilitate that. Amen. We're not into programs just to draw people. Please hear that and please understand what I mean. People are the heart, but not numbers. I know of, of places called churches that are just about 
numbers. I know pastors that love to preach, but they don't love people. I know people that are in full-time ministry that aren't full-time Christians. Oh, look out now. Huh? They love to preach, but they don't love people. I had a guy at a Bible study way back. We was doing a Bible study out of town. He really, you know, had some ministry in his heart. He said, well, I tell you, he said, says it right at the table uh, in, the, in the Bible study. And at that time, I wasn't mature enough to not just challenge that in front of everybody. If you want to act a fool in front of everybody, I'm going to dress you like a fool in front of everybody. That was where I was at that day. He said, well, I tell you what, he said, it ain't God. I got a problem with it's people. He said, I love God, it's just people I have trouble with. I said, well, I got trouble with you. I said it to provoke him, to be honest. I got in the flesh real, I don't think everybody at the table knew, I kept it pretty subtle, but I did try to get him to talk a little trash, you know. See if I could prick him a little bit. I said, I got trouble with you, I got problem with you. They love to preach, but they don't love people. Realize without people, we have nothing here. I come up here almost every night to just pray. And, and right in here, I just walk right back from, I walk down this aisle. Just to worship God and pray. And, I, and every time I'm aware, this is just sheetrock and texture, cloth. I mean, just wood foam and cloth right I mean it's just wood it's just wood it's just you know carpet plywood made to look pretty for the eyes of everybody so they don't just you know look at raw plywood and screws but it brings no gifting no anointing no calling and no life that is all in you. Huh? Right? That's in you. That's in the Spirit of God in all of you. The life is in the people. Isn't that wonderful? I'm just telling you basically how much I love you, okay? You know, when a minister here says, let's not make sure we don't get into strife you know what I'm saying if I say that I care about everybody and we can't have that because that hinders the people when I tell Molly put your seatbelt on hey put your seatbelt on that's me saying I love you and I care about you right why are you always nagging daddy I don't know you ain't seen nag girl I'm a U.S. Marine. You ain't never seen nag. I'm saying I love you when I say get that seatbelt on. When I say buckle up, I'm saying I love you and I care for you. Well, that's what God's saying when he says don't let any envy and strife come in because envy always leads to strife, always leads to division. It's always in that order, envy, strife, division. Keep it out. We hear? So God opened their doors. Let's read our last scripture together and Brother Bob will receive please Micah 2 13 from the three translations and we'll be wrap this up tonight let's read it together ready the breaker the Messiah who opens the way shall go up before them liberating them they will break out pass through the gate and go out so their king goes before them the Lord at their heads easy to read version ready the one who breaks through walls will push through and walk to the front of his people. Complete Jewish Bible. I, God, will burst all confinements and lead them out into the open. They'll follow their king. I will be out in front leading them. Can you say amen tonight? Hallelujah. Brother Bob, please come up, sir. Let's receive before we leave. Man, man, I was just a little poet. Didn't even mean to. Proceed before we leave. I like that. Yeah. We, know, we know his will. Now we just wait for him to show us the way. It just, it, it works. How many of you have ever 
You don't have to raise your hands. Wanted something so bad. Now, hang on. I'm not talking about something spiritual. I'm talking about some stupid piece of something. That you were willing to go against what you knew to go get it. And case in point, there's, there's this silly thing. I don't know why, and I'm not, I'm not even going to give details. I'm just going to tell you, there, there has been this thing. And it's not that I couldn't get it. But through something that I've been talking about uh, the last couple of times we've been together, because not just my time in Heartland Church, but Winter Bible Seminar had a profound effect on my relationship with the Lord and how I... How I interact with him, how he's interacted with me has always been the same. He's all, he's a plumb line. He doesn't ever move. But it's me that have learned, am learning how, how better to interact with him. And so that thing, as much as my silly flesh wants it, I don't have a release to get it. You know, I've even, I've even tried to, not that anybody would ever try to manipulate God. It's like, well, Lord, I mean, if I got that, it, I don't know that that's seed for me to eat. It could be seed for me to sow. I mean, if I got it, then I'm serious. This is for real, people. <laughs> you have those conversations and you go, oh, Jesus, Lord, thank you. All that to say this, 2 Corinthians 9, 6, out of the passion, this is just beautiful. It says, here's my point. A stingy sower will reap a meager harvest, but the one who sows from a generous spirit will reap an abundant harvest. Down in the notes, the, i got to read this, that, Aramaic can be translated, the one who sows with a storehouse of seed remaining. This describes a farmer who is stingy with his sowing. Since he has a storehouse of seed, he can afford to sow liberally. So sometimes we've got to put that flesh down and make sure that we're hearing God on those silly things. Because right this moment, just from a recent interaction when I was at the place where this silly thing is, and I, t I go in there and it's just like, oh. Everywhere I walk, it's like it has eyes. It's like, yeah, it sees me over here. It sees me over there. And I thought, you know what, Lord? I'm going to purpose myself to sow what that thing costs. Um, and I know where I'm going to sow it, so it, that's, that's neither here nor there. But that kind of thing is helping me to really understand. You go on to verse 7, and it talks about, let it spring up freely from the joy of giving. Let's be joyful. He's so good to us, and he's given us so much. And uh, when we really begin to realize, really begin to press into who he is and who he wants to be for us, what we experience, just praising tonight. And, and, and go back to Winter Bible Seminar. A lot of times in our spiritual lives, you think, okay, I'm, I'm at this point and things aren't working. Go back to the last time it was working. If something in your, in, in your life has come back to where it was before after Winter Bible Seminar, 
Go back to Winter Bible Seminar. Go back to that teaching. Go back to that moment. Go back to the things that really just built your faith. Because that same spirit, there's no reason for us to back off. It's not, it's not a revival where we just stand around and, and act out and do a bunch of things and, and, oh, glory to God, it was great and we had a great time. Keep having a great time. Keep having a great time. Keep pressing in. He's there for you. He's there for you. Father, I thank you right now. Lord Jesus, I thank you. You provide seed to us. We are sowers, Lord Father. We give with cheerful hearts, hilarious giving, Lord Father, because we love you, Lord. You've given seed to us, Lord Father, and we want to sow as much seed as we can. The more seed we sow, the more fruit we just reap and, 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 and harvest, Lord Father. And as we harvest more, we get to give more. And thank you, Father, we are a body not about building storehouses upon storehouses. We're a body about emptying ourselves for you because you've, you've emptied yourselves into us, Lord. You've emptied yourselves in our lives, and you emptied yourself of your Son for our sake. So we thank you for the blood of Jesus tonight. We thank you for the word that we received tonight, and we thank you, Lord, that we are privileged to, to present the tithe, the tenth, the holy, the holy part to you. Lord, we sow because we love you, and because, Lord, we love others because of your love through us. We honor you tonight, Lord, and we give you the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now, while they while they handle that, let's talk about karaoke Friday night. Pastor, we're going to do everything we can to get back from Dallas, Texas, for karaoke. No, we want to be there. This is going to be so much fun. If you've never been to karaoke, it's the best karaoke ever. Well, I just threw Pastor's Bible down. Ooh. It is. It is so much fun. It's just an opportunity for us to fellowship together. And that's ultimately, that's what it's all about. It's, it's Renovate Youth Fundraiser. This, this is where they, they do, where they receive seed from us. There's going to be some great food. I've seen lots of people posting on Facebook how many, you know, how many potatoes for 75 pounds of potato salad or I mean there's all kinds of stuff so be there it's going to be Friday night it starts at 6 30 that's right 6 to 8 30 okay I didn't know I was just going off off road but uh, that is this Friday night it's going to be a, a lot of fun woman to woman this Sunday ladies so I know you you ladies are excited about that Ecclesia every Monday night here we go Brian and Mandy, we love you guys. And uh, Nobleman tomorrow morning, 6.30, right out there. Um, I just want to thank Jacob and Haley. I really do. I got a, I, I got a Nobleman shirt, and uh, we're going we're, we're gonna to have to talk about doing some more of those. We are. Yeah, yeah, ch chunk that thing up at me. I want everybody to see this thing. All right, here we go. That's a great designer. We ought to come in. I'm, I'm, Haley, I'm going to get with you on some additional colors. I want a complete wardrobe. So, Nobleman, tomorrow morning at 630, guys. It's going to be a great time. And we will, glory to God, see you guys Sunday morning. And don't forget, there's a building out there. There's a building. We'll be having our next building service soon. Continue to be in prayer about what you're part of the of that is glory to God. Thank you all for being here. Be blessed. Shamar.